we've got I've left this powered up now for sort of ten odd minutes, and I'm just going to go around and looking at these voltages. And if we just take a quick look at the screen, see again. Look, we're going to adjust the twenty k, which uh, this is a twenty k A, and uh, make plus twenty volt DC between both ends of A and G. So this is A here. This uh, anode of this is in a diode and G is our ground on our input so we're just going to take a little look at that I'll put this one on the right way around just so it shows up on the screen and then we're going to go there we're going to go there so that's 20.60 uh, 20.063 so that's, that's good enough we also want to make sure that we've got one volt across here, one volt across here, one volt and one volt. So let's take a little peek at that now. So we've got 0.82. Uh, let's have a little look on this one. 0.82. Same again on these. Finding it hard to see in there. 0.83 then again on this one 0.823 yeah about all right uh, now we're going to be looking at uh, we're going to look at the other side now so on the screen we're going to be looking at this side here we've got a minus 20 volts here on this uh, cathode of the xenodiode and we're going to go there and you know just the 20k variable to b so the minus 20 uh, between both ends of b this part of the and g the ground just swapping these rounds to keep the polarity looking where we uh, where we want to be so i think that is there and on this side of this here, there, so we've got minus 20.07 there, so that's a lot pretty much close enough. And we also want to see if we have, we should have minus 18 volts here on this five, uh, 560R, and minus 18 on this uh, 560, minus 19.5 here. And uh, minus 19.5 here. So we'll take a peek at those as well and see how close or not we are to those. So that was supposed to be 18, so 18.3. And then we're going to 19.5, which is 19.48. Which is good enough. Just swap those fingers around. And here we're going to go from our ground to minus 18 on this part. We've got 18.4 there. And a 19.5 there. So, you know, they're all pretty much there, aren't they? Pretty much there. There's going to be, you know, maybe slight differences here. Now what we want to make sure is that we don't have more than 20 millivolts coming out of here. Um, really got any heat going there. So let's just plug that in there. Ooh, that's not clever. And plug that in there. So that's 50. So we want to turn down then this pop which is underneath here which is easier said than done with my big hands in the way let me just swap that out like that and just keep that held in there now I did find that this is very sensitive these parts and it's also very sensitive to um temperature because watch if I move this away so we let this settle 
I mean, it says it's got to be lower than 20. But if I just blow on that, see what happens there, look? It's gone minus now. <laughs> minus, so we'll come back and look at that again in a minute. Let's have a look at this one. And we got a... It's on a minus as well. Connected the right way around, polarity wise. Well, let's just do a little fiddle with this. And See, it says it wants to be below, so that's like 10. Thirty-five. Use that AC on there. Uh, let's just get that in. Can't get it in the slot. There we go. So it wants to be under twenty, right? So we could drop it to minus. I don't think that's what it really means. It just wants to be under twenty, so. But like I say, this is a bit temperature. Because look again, I mean, hopefully this is going to balance out a little bit. If I blow on the circuit, look. It's probably blowing on the circuit. I'm not sure, you know, I don't think these pots are going to be that good. What we're going to do anyway is we're going to, we're just going to see what it performs like by this, by doing our tests. We can just have a look. But it does say below 20, doesn't it? Yeah. Minus 20 millivolts DC, it says. Of course, that's not minus 20 volts DC, is it? 20 millivolts DC, not 20 volts. Did I say 20 volts? So you might find this a bit fiddly. You might just think, you know, get it round about there somewhere. and uh, And then... Just do some tests and see what it's like. So I'm going to set up now for some tests. Okay, guys. So um, we've done the setting up. Let's take a peek at the screen and see what we've got here. I've already run through these. I let it warm up for a good 20 minutes. So here we go. We've got a THD plus noise versus frequency. So we're running through. Uh, this is a 20. 20 hertz, uh, 0 0.058, 0 0.057. Little thing here, but I think some of these, because this happens on so many, I think this could be something internal, could be something to do with the AD2. Um, I couldn't really tell you I get the same sort of thing when I do this on my laptop with or without uh, the battery. So if it's running with mains without the battery, the same stuff comes up if it's running with the battery the same stuff comes up so uh, it's just something we've got to live with on this so anyway we can see uh yeah it's, it's it's pretty good this is with the noise remember this is there's no screening on this board or anything like that so it's with the noise it's looking at the peaks look at this uh, 0 0.059 0 0.062 a little peak here 0. 0 0.061, 0 0.065, 0 0.7, or 0 0.07, and 0 0.07 on the other side. Little peak here, what we got going on there. 0 0.079, 0 0.083, and I don't know why this does this. It could be something to do with the, you know, these components. They're not as quality as what you get if you store bought. You can certainly tell with the resistors. Anybody that's bought a store, you know, rep reputable distribution resistors. 
and these ones that come from China. And you can tell, yeah, they look good enough. They're painted up well enough, but on the leads and stuff. You know, and so there's a possibility we got some uh, little differences just because of that. But are you going to know? Not really. And if we get rid of the noise on there, well, that drops down quite nicely. This is actually 20, 20 hertz, 0 0.032. I'm just going to do the 0 0.03. Um, instead of doing the 0, 0.0 because it gets a bit annoying, doesn't it? So uh, 0 0.032, 0 0.034, go along, 0 0.032, 0 0.036, go along, 0 0.031, 0 0.037. So the um, the blue is the secondary number, as you can see up here, look, 0 0.040 0 against 0 0.029. Mm, so there is some differences there. But I wonder what it would be like if, uh, you know, by the board and just take a whole bunch of the store-bought components on there. I wonder if the difference on price and, you know, having to do the entire uh, buying of it and everything else. I wonder if the difference in price would really make up the difference um, on this. I don't know. But the reason why I do it with the kit parts is so you get to see what it's going to be like if you buy the kit. And this is just the... An estimation because if the parts uh, have got variables in the quality of them, um, your kit's probably going to look a little bit different anyway. I did a, um, I did one for the um, on voltage low, or for the THD plus noise versus power because it's a preamplifier, and I noticed down here was sort of like the sweet spot, you know, the lowest for the, the pair of them, and that's around about um, four point uh, four volts so about halfway um, on the volume if we look here you know this is we get to the one percent uh, it's like 1.1 volt vrms um, but before that we get about 0.948 so yeah about halfway just before halfway and the volume is probably where the sweetest spot is for it um, frequency response now let me just take you all the way over to here look at this and this looks pretty good. Now, admittedly, I'm not using my scope probe and the BNC adapter board. I've made up some leads. I've used DuPont connections. Uh, let me just switch this over here. Look. So I've just made up some leads. If you look at it like this. So DuPont connector blocks. Uh, these are in what's that, six, is it? Yep. And then this is uh, for another test. But this is just one channel. Um, so that's the scope leads and on here I've got two lots here uh, side by side scope channel one and two grounds coming through and then I've got the wave uh, waveform uh, generator I just use one channel of it and split it into two for both sides of the input so you know they're exactly the same they're getting fed exactly the same from the wave from the single waveform and uh, and the ground of course the blue one there is the ground and I'm wondering if because it's now uh, able to handle that lower frequency better because it's a thicker cable being used rather than the real thin cables that are in the scope probes, especially if they're, you know, a lot more scope probes are cheapy cheapies, um, just there to give me a all about measurement. Um, doesn't you know? Look, I look at it like this: if you can buy a pair of scope probes for ten pounds. But then you can also buy a pair of scope probes for five hundred pounds. There's got to be a difference, right? Well, mine are ten pounds. So, <laughs> and it's all it's sort of suggested anyway um, to use the the wiring system straight in rather than the the scope probe. So, as you can see on the high frequency, we seem to go up a little bit here. But even at the very peak, it's something that's like what's that point? Uh, one two dBr uh, above the, the reference voltage going in, so really nothing to say there, nothing to tell there. It's not a uh, point one three. It's not really gonna, not really gonna make much difference on brightness. You're not really gonna be able to sit there and go, well, I can tell the difference of that point one three against the you know, point zero zero. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's quite a lot of dB gain though. I mean, that's 20 point, 20 and a half dB gain, which from what I understand on 
Um, on preamplifiers, that's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. Anyway, so uh, let's have a look at the spectrum analyzer. This is quite nice. This is the main noise down the bottom here at minus 100 dBr. And on here, we can see where that. Uh, we can see the. Um, um, the uh, I think that's on the on the on the third. Is it? There we go. Let's go on the blue. It's on the third. That's on the third. So that's lower on the third on this one. And if we look at the spectrum analyzer, it sort of shows that on the third, uh, the blue's higher. And um, I like to look at it like that as well, looking at cross reference in them all, just to make sure they're all going to be. But yeah, this is good software done by Jake at the stuff made. Can't. Um, I'd love to be able to promote them even more. Um, this is a, the second harmonic, and even on that, they're minus 74 zero dB. Uh, and to be honest with you, I think this is on par with that Accuphase. Uh, I think if you look at it closely, this might even be slightly better. Uh, I did one channel of the Accuphase, this is doing two, so it's not fair to compare the difference because I don't know what it would have been on that but when it comes to the total harmonic distortion and the, uh, I think it's uh, pretty much on par there are different characteristics in both these I'm slightly different because you can see them when you go through well I think it's on par um, take a peek at the scope so uh, there we go that's at uh, one kilohertz and there's that slight rise there that's showing us that little bit in the frequency response going up in the trebly area um, but this is um, interesting part. I'm going to go straight to 10 hertz to show you. That's 10 hertz. Hmm. Yep, that's 10 hertz. That's, uh, and it's not a fluke. It shows it on the frequency response, that flat line. It also shows you on the square wave. It's Quite happy there, so let's just get that to 200. Not that it's gonna, we saw what it was like at 1000 anyway, it's just I'm gonna have to go to a 2000 now. Yeah, and then we're gonna get to 20,000. So 20 kilohertz. Yeah. But even so, that's still pretty, pretty good. Yeah, 30, it's not much point really going any higher than that. So, but yeah, so I would say uh, all in all, let's just quickly out of 50. Still, uh, still not too bad. That's uh, way past what we really need. So, by looking at it like this, you can see there's no there's no real problems with it. There's no you know no problem. There's no reason why this if your input, whatever you're putting in, if you're putting something halfway decent, then you're going to get something halfway decent out. And this isn't going to add or lose anything to it really. I think uh, yeah, I've used the 56 kilo ohm uh, load only because I've said it before. I've seen like NAD. Uh, amplifiers and stuff, the input impedance, 56k, yeah, that'll do, um, 50 to 100k, whatever, you know, I've just, I've just chosen that because I saw the numbers and I just thought, yeah, 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 just, just choose that. So there you go, that's that, that's the, um, that's what we got, that's what the output is, looks like a nice amp, nice and easy to build, might be a bit better with, um, with these pots. Um, I don't know whether it's because some of these components aren't as good as what they could be. Maybe it's, it can seem like it's a bit drifty trying to set up this part, but you know, um, when it first starts, it's like a bolt, and as it warms up, it goes down. I I'm just want to show you now what this is like uh, when it first starts up. So, just into the left channel, I've got my uh, probes from my multimeter. Comes here, and this is in. Uh, DC volt range at the moment and what I'm going to do is uh, I want to see what the voltage is when this first switches on on the output the speaker output so we don't want it to be too high at all so we can see just for a 
with a short moment over there. It was uh, just over a volt. And that will keep going down now. That'll keep going down and uh, we want it to be under 20 millivolts like that's the suggestion that it's under 20 millivolts and as you can see this takes a bit of time for this to go down I'm planning to switch it over to the millivolt range yet oh, it's in now Let's seal this, uh, this down the bottom here. I don't know if you can make out that, that well. Let me put you a bit closer. Get that light out of there. Can you see that? That's, um, that's the AC. On the Right, so this is what I'm, I'm looking for. Now I'm going to tell you now that when you do this you might get a bit frustrated because it's temperature dependent. So this thing is going to be better set up in its enclosure. Uh, which would be better anyway, especially if it's a metal enclosure because it's going to be better for screening. Uh, but look, look what happens to the meter if I blow on the board. You see that? No, it's just me blowing on it. So as this warms up, uh, so what, I mean, what I've had to do with this to get it to sort of be just sort of stable underneath the the twenty um, is to just leave it running, leave it running for ten fifteen minutes in this environment, so it just gets itself warmed up enough, and then you know start doing the measurements. But I've done this a lot like three or four times now, and I'm going to do it again, though. Because I've made up some other cables, uh, you can see these, but I made up some other other cables for doing this. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to leave that now and uh, go ahead and start taking the measurements. You know, below it gets around about you know the, the 20 mini volts and below on both sides. This one seems a bit more stable than this side. So again, you've got to consider the fact that these components aren't the greatest coming out of China for these kits. Um, and the pots probably are no good. But I don't have any replacement pots. I don't have any 500 hours. If I did, I'd probably take that one out and put it another one in there just to see if, if there was any difference. So whether it's down to the pot or whether it's down to maybe some of the other components. But anyway, that's it. Got this far, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Bye bye for now.